I think that by spending the first 18 years of my life in Zambia and then since having travelled a lot, I've become very aware that if you are very open to people, there's a real depth of connection no matter where they are and even if they don't share your language. I've worked in many different countries and pieces that come to mind in terms of language was working with a group of Kurdish women um, and I was totally astounded at doing this piece of work in which we all felt so at one with each other um, and also I initiated this group called, called PAVES which were women from Israel, from Croatia, from Iraq, from Northern Ireland um, and we worked in each other's countries. And recently I've been working with artists from Zambia again. And it's been great just to reconnect to that um, sense of a very intimate mindset I remember from my childhood. And um, I've just reconnected with this artist called Sarah Chibomwe, both of us working from our eight-year-old selves. <laughs> Performance is really central to my work. The dilemma for me is actually how to capture the vitality and the spark that you feel in performance. And I can really identify with that belief system that says uh, the camera steals one's soul. Because often looking at photographs after a performance, I thought, gosh, they look so bland and lifeless. And they don't seem to have anything to do with what I felt was going on in the performance. So for several years, I did um, not want any uh, documentation of my work to happen. I rather liked the idea of the ephemerality of the morphine through people's brains, through the encoding systems of electrochemical processes, of that morphine and the fluidity seemed to me much more real to how performance should be perceived. But then I also started to think of ways in which I could incorporate photography into the work itself so that um, the photography became part of the fluidity. So for instance at Modern Art Oxford I did a work which was at the end of an exhibition of my photographs which I'd had specifically printed in water-based inks. And um, the performance basically I had a bucket and a sponge and I just washed the surfaces of the photographs so that the inks just dripped down the wall and slowly they disintegrated and become fluid and very painterly and finally they were left as completely empty frames with all these drippings all around them. So that was one way. Another piece I did using photography was in 2019, a work called Closer, which was looking at a 40-year period. I'd first done this piece in 1979, which was basically swinging my head continuously, uttering these incantations. And I wanted to use that swinging process in the photographs themselves. Well, I've done many confrontational works, um, particularly early on, looking at that idea of the gaze and trying to make it confusing or absurd or ridiculous. So, for instance, I used to walk down the street with a, a rubber hand clutching my breast or my groin so that people looking on quite sure, you know, what, what is this indicating? And then in photography, I also wanted to do that confusing idea of something that does look fetishistic, but doesn't quite fit, so that there's an unease, something unsettling about the image. But I think now with 
re-looking at gender fluidities, a whole different set of consciousness about who we are in terms of sexuality and gender, makes that whole gaze much, much more nuanced. And I think now the inward gaze is what is really happening and the selfie and this new heterotopian space of the mirror has been taken over by the selfie. I think that Susan Sontag was really prescient in the 70s saying that the camera makes everyone a tourist in others' reality and eventually in one's own, that whole sense of othering ourselves. <laughs>